beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed hallelujah I say this because there are many of us in the past, maybe three, four, five years, your spiritual life has not been stable. It's been a journey like a pendulum. Right now, you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again. I heard a lady send me a text and said, honestly, since I graduated, let me tell you sincerely, I went to a church and I'm serving under that church and I've sat under that teaching for three, two, three months or thereabout. And right now, I don't even know what I should believe again. If that becomes your testimony, you will be angry in the future. Because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place. There are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass and they run people give towards those ideologies people give their lives towards those ideologies what do you believe what can you stand for about god about your life about your destiny are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of god's life we just hop around anything that looks like the truth so you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing based on what i've had now i'm not really sure it doesn't make sense let me stop and then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying and then tomorrow it's easy for you to bribe. And then later on you say, Kite, I need to repent. Where do you stand? See, the Bible says, I wish that thou art hot or cold. You are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. He said, as a result, I will spew you out of my mouth. You must stand for something. You must stand for an ideology. You must stand for a dimension of truth is like marriage you cannot marry every woman is that true you cannot marry every man so you see a pretty lady right now and say ah, ah, where have you been if I saw you I would not ask Rose out and then the next thing you see another person and say you see that's how many of us are there is a lot of spiritual harlotry and at the end of it, we are infected with all kinds of viruses. Nothing stands. So you used to pray and fast, but you had something. And right now, you don't even see a need for it again. Then you hear another message and you are now confused. So believers are swinging like pendulums. 
if your life must move forward you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit listen let me tell you something I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives and I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives are you getting my point when we began to pursue the things of God years ago some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God but right now the equation is still zero they have not been able to stand for something true there are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry you don't even know what to call of the ministry so within two weeks they say we are a healing ministry and later on they hear another hot message and they say our focus now is holiness and then later on they say our people cannot be poor and 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 and, and make heaven so we are focused where do you stand hallelujah are you hearing what i'm saying and many of us have been victims like that you've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did because you had something that made them useless and now you are looking for it you cannot find it because what you have held on to is not working listen we are going to pray in one minute and you are going to pray and say Lord let me not pretend this thing help me to stand for something real help me to stand for something true lift your voice and pray inside and outside pray for one minute I am communicating to us a burden of the spirit you must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about do you believe in divine health is it a reality to you do you believe in the supernatural power of god what has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe was it supposed to change what has not changed about your life why has it not changed Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today. And we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives. There are things I will never believe. I will never believe them. There are things I will never stop believing. There are things I'm open to change about. Because there are higher heights. There are things I have found that are true. Go ahead and pray. What have you found? Ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies. There's no need pretending it. It's possible that you're here, yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place. It is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it proximity is not the same as connectivity that you are close to an anointing that you are close to a revelation does not mean it will become part of your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the, the stigmatizations and the mockery, probably, or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives. That you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married. And that commitment, you are so ashamed of it. Is that true? To an extent that when you hear people talking, and they say how about you so who is for this weekend you just laugh and then you feel to say no 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 I, I this is not my ideology it is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come 
Hallelujah. Every great man is fanatic about something. And if you must ever experience greatness, especially in the spirit, you must have something you are convinced about. And you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions. Very interesting scripture. The Bible says, can we have that scripture again? There is a way that what? Seems right. Seems right. Unto a man. And appears straight. The road is not straight. <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing. It is a straight road. Hallelujah. Like a drunkard. When a drunkard takes. Eight bottles of beer. He can see this door. Right here. Is that true? Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God. About rapture. About the coming of Christ. About Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work. There are those who believe that walking is an insult. Is that true? There are those who believe if you are not walking, you are not yet a man or a woman. You are still a child. We have all kinds of ideologies. But the Bible says there is what? A way. It seems right unto a man. But in the end, look at it. The dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong. You see why it is dangerous? Imagine, brothers and sisters, that you took a 10-hour journey or 12-hour journey to Lagos and you followed a wrong road. And after 12 hours, you meet a, a military man on the road. And he says, where are you really going? And he says, sir, the truth is Lagos. He says, ah, you are at the other side of this nation. So it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake. Are you getting what I'm saying? Everything looks the same. It is time that shows what is true and what is false. When you plant a crop, both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases. But when you allow time, it will show the difference. All of us right now are here. We can jump. I am successful. Oh, the Holy Spirit is working with me. The life of God is in me. I'm committed to the kingdom. I'm an ambassador. We are all speaking the same thing. But time will prove those whose convictions are sincere, genuine, and solid. And those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry. There is a way 
one of the things that intrigued me i i remember then when i was in secondary school you know we wanted to make it so much every subject that we had to study we took it very seriously and um i did fine arts and one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson we were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing is that true and they called it what perspectives and so when we were given assignments they will tell us from so 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 perspective draw this building praise the lord there were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective they must be represented in your drawing is that true and i enjoyed it so much but then i got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone but that it was a revelation that was applicable in life perspectives everyone say perspectives that it matters your interpretation of life and everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from are you getting my point now if we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside is that true based on what the artist is drawing that was the information that his eyes could pick he may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here and then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it my goodness you would think koinonia has been held in a stadium perspectives so it is possible please listen to me that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life are you getting my point and be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective it's one of the biggest problems with the body of christ and so a man of god can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase are you getting me and a good life and a great life and from his perspective that is all there is to the christian experience are you getting me and then the christians in places like iraq and iran and the israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood it can cost you your life this is their perspective are you getting what i'm saying and to them it may not interest them so much when you are teaching this guy here is teaching i have come that you may have life is that true and have life more abundantly i refuse to be sick i refuse to be poor whereas another person looking at the same truth from another perspective begins to speak and say for me to live is christ and to die is gain if it will cost me my life so be it yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven there is a fight and this is his perspective now the trouble starts hear me when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective you see where error begins to come in when we do not realize that the best 
that any man can be is an effective member of the body. Hallelujah. And so I'm here. This is the perspective I've seen. And now I look at the person in Iraq and I say, this guy does not have faith. If he had faith, guns and bullets will not enter his body. Whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here. Are you getting me? I live in a house that is secured digitally. And these guys here are speaking and say, Lord, help these people not to be carnal. Let them not miss heaven. Let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread. Yet we are all supposed to be believers. And then there are others. Watch this. That this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. But everybody, when they say, feel your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says there is a way. Everybody said there is a way. Now the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues. And it is important that you get to a point in your life. This is why you find out, have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches? Have you seen the commotion that happens there? During things like fasting and prayer or, or maybe Christmas or New Year or something. Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be won. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels, there are, there are many. They are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said, some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said, they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. 
Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. He was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they knew. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, How are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books that try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it and truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it and entered something else. There are others who read it and nothing happened. Lift your hands and say, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Please say it, Lord, reveal the truth to me. Jesus said it this way. I am the way, not any prophet, not any apostle, not any teacher, not any pastor. I am the way. You follow men, you will follow a lot of things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If all you want to do in your life is to follow Apostle Joshua Selman, you are going to be in big trouble. I am the way. I am the truth. In fact, he puts it this way. Let every man, man of God, man of men, politicians, let every man be a liar. But let God alone. That means if you build your life, hear me, if you build your ministry around a man, you are in for shock. I've said this thing again and again and again. This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders multiplied people and all of that Jesus is being glorified in that ministry if I be lifted up I will draw all men to myself there is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear 
no matter how ugly it sounds, it will make you a wonder in life. There is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life. There is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest. The Bible says, be careful how you hear. And tonight the Lord is bringing a word. He said there is a way. There is a way that seems right. There are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true. Hallelujah. We believe, we are so convinced. We've argued it that this is the truth. <laughs> Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty. Meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord and he was being fervent in spirit according to what he had been taught he spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord what was the limitation he knew only the baptism of John so the entire scope of his eloquence and his spiritual argument as powerful as they were they were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that your pastors, your leaders, there are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got a one in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now one day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why you see brothers and sisters. It's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage, it's a privileged position. Not everybody is daft spiritually. Pastors, never forget this. When you stand, there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man. Like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective... I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. it says, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day. There were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla and they kept quiet. Worship team sang. And the guy wore suit, he came up. And he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. 
How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Ah, amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache, God healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day, he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see, the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses, areas of excesses, areas where his eye had not seen. When they took him, what happened? They expounded. They said, all right, there is the baptism of John. But did you know that Pentecost happened? The guy said, no. The person who taught me did not teach me that. Probably the person who taught him, taught him as Alpha. Maybe he was one of the scribes. The scribes are the suspects in this teaching. Maybe they taught him and they said, look, Moses is our father. And this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been are you hearing what I'm saying? Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. Boy, could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone. Are you hearing me? That there are times that if need be, you may have to die for your convictions. If you open your heart to that dimension, then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a born servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Hmm. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers 
spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant Christian it makes your Christian experience richer are you hearing what I'm saying and it is for this cause Ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please that he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens verse 10 verse 11 and he gave some what apostles and some and some and some and some perspectives he gave unto them he engraced his body with gifts listen to me revealed perspectives to them there are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church they can host a convention they can lift wheelchairs, but they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? the ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life. Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference and there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness, these people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy by, at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people, but I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me, it's on the strength of much prayer and fasting. And my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12... Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. 
That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh, oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel, but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya. Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadeh and his message. Say, please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there, are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access there are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then... Now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? 
God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I will not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe, that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benue. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing. And get blessed. Billy Graham. It was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was not, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And there were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away, and you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas, there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product... Apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the, dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've touched many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because... I really want to talk about something else. Listen, the way we were trained, huh? hear me, 
if I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road, you will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you and ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. Yes, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you will ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinching or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place, and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive, they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me, is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16. They know you have not been, you have not been following. Because if you are following, we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month. that we, This memory you see. It's not just that. Okay the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it. But if I were born and bred a Pentecostal. Pure Pentecostal. Maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food, you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough, prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? For now. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darlene Jack. As we are busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. 
Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not, you go home, straight there, you are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call, you know how the Bible says it, rebuke one, then call another, you are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to, anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this, no. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. <laughs> Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you will have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car eh? or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter tight. And the reason is that you are being a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all these mindset people had, all these boyfriend and girlfriend thing people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, oh. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. 
When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God. Mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy. Very short guy. My goodness. Look, that guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with, began to talk to me and he said there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message unseen. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message unseen. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it. Very quickly, we are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And we endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with IK, we traveled two years or so ago. While we are ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think IK or so had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent. Because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. As a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. And you say, when you are, free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you are a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet David danced. Yet it was because 
Herod's daughter dance that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God. I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, I'd rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now. And then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality. I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach and I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me, scared me in a way that I said, and then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything yet. You are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you. But God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samade and me and the rest. And you just feel these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said, they are coming. You are failing on a principle.
There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who have people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes, it will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Samadeemi. And add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly, but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, pray on it for me. You now start saying, ah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please, let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said, 
why do ye also transgress what by god is asking you a question which will you choose to uphold to transgress the traditions of men you are in a place and the lord is asking you lay hands on this sick body and you say no kai i'm not i'm not used to it i'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church that's not what i'm saying but you are in your house they've never seen the laying on of hands and god is saying go ahead and do it if you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death someone will die and you transgress please let's go back you transgress the commandment of god so that you will keep your tradition next verse for god commanded saying honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother let him die the death next verse but he say whosoever shall say to his father or his mother it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me verse 6 and honor not his father and his mother he shall be free thus have ye made the commandment of god of none effect you can make the power of god the word of god the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to it's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual we love things happening normally let it be happening the way i have always known it and the moment i see another perspective then it is not of god it is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guests is carnal. Everybody is one before God. And in those churches, when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. Once it's time for sermon, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview. You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. And Young man, keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. This is what I believe. Because you were not taught the principles of excellence. You called it spirituality. But you've lost your job because of it. You were not taught diligence. That a Christian is also an agent of national transformation. And time to walk in the office. You are fasting and praying. And you are not doing anything. You left your job undone. When it was time to promote you. You saw yourself being promoted in the spirit. Physically they demoted you. Because you are not adding to the advancement of the group. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are people who just sit down. And feel I know all the principles. I know the principles of business expertise. I understand the psychology of communication. Until somebody fires an arrow from your village. And you wake up and one leg cannot move. And that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted. Then you know that there is more to life. Than psychology and philosophy. I'm telling you the truth. When Satan comes. 
he finds the dimension you have ignored in God, that becomes his access point in your life. So there are anointed but broke believers. There are broke, there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around, you are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things and you come back and see the hand of God, it convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that his hair had gone. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men, oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be, that's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once. Four years ago, this man was a great man. Everywhere, but now, the lampstand has been taken. Let me tell you, God can take away the candlestick of men and give others. Read your Bible. He took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. It was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, me, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it and run into problems. I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us. And then I listened to an apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Budok. And he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry. He said, never try to do to people what only God can do to them. Deliverance. That was it. I learned how to sleep soundly. Because I didn't used to sleep. I said, how can my sheep be awake and me I'm awake now? <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once it was getting too much everybody would call at every time i became a receptionist hundreds of phone calls like every 30 minutes someone is calling and the person can cry for 50 i was wearing out literally and then the lord said why don't you put something like that some of you are in that thing right now you have you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person. Visitors came to your house. You went and borrowed 10,000 naira to buy them spaghetti. You bought them books. You went to Jordan bookstore, bought books. I want you to be spiritual. Now you are in trouble. And the people have turned their back and they are insulting you. Because you want a good name. Is someone learning something here? There are many of us, you are spiritual, but if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until God blesses you. Take life easy. No sharp, 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 sharp.
I will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that God has anointed and brought me in the earth. There are vessels. There are dimensions in the spirit. I want to be blessed and prosperous. I don't want to be a struggling man of God. I don't want Koinonia to be a struggling ministry. At the same time, I don't want to be a carnal man of God. I want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the God of my salvation. I want to walk spiritually aligned. I want to be at the cutting edge of what God is doing. I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah! Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want us to just go like that. I know that you've gotten something. But I just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared. To fulfill your assignment in life, you need divine guidance. Oh, this is very important. You need divine guidance. No man outgrows the need to be guided. No man. No matter how spiritual you are. You can never outgrow the need to be guided by God. Only a fool in his heart will say there is no God. Confusion, I wrote here, is part of the limitation of mankind. I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction. Divine direction in our lives. Divine direction. Very, very important. Proverbs 16 verse 25. Very quickly. 16 verse 25. Everybody say confusion. Look up please. There are many of us right now. That if a prophet, a genuine prophet of God. Would enter here right now. And have a one-on-one -on -one session with us. And say by the grace of God. I will talk with you one on one and let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished you want to know am i still going to be in zaria am i going to go somewhere is that the scripture what did i say proverbs what oh no no psalm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 i'm sorry psalm 37 verse 23 we need divine direction in our lives you can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience and to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came... That's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, 
we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship, but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married, but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life, but you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle. Nothing will work. When you are in the geography, when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia. I can look out and say, wow, there's a crowd inside and outside. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. It's okay. Nothing more. Whereas, God's idea, God's mandate upon my life is the nations. Are you getting what I'm saying? Abraham had about 316 or so men. But his prophetic destiny was the entire earth. Our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. That means you can be making decision based on a truth you think you know, whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich, who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that is darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas, if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, 
thou hast well seen that means you can see wrongly he said for i will hasten my word that you have now seen that means your speed in life is also based on your perception you don't see wrongly you will not move fast in life but the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord very quickly what does it take to receive divine direction from god i really feel sad i'm just doing a lecture i'm, I'm so sorry our time is gone and i want us to pray number one requirements to be divinely directed by god number one you must admit that you are limited you must admit you must break your pride and admit that you are limited it is not listen it's not an insult look up please i want to teach you this about life please and please do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything are you hearing me do not even if you are a celebrity do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything every time i see our daddy come and sit down here i am very humbled by his humility brothers and sisters this is a professor the brightest and the finest in his field yet our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down and a small boy like me his son is just talking it's like i'm talking to my father and he's writing how many of us can have that humility are you hearing what i'm saying you must admit that you are limited no matter how prophetic you think you are no matter how apostolic you think you are many times when i cry before god i say lord help this small boy if you don't help me i will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid that's how i cry before god i'm not insulting myself i know it's the truth and i say lord send your word send me the word of the lord How many of us here can admit that i am great but i am limited if i depend on my strength alone i will mix intelligent and foolish decisions if you depend on your ability to choose a wife you will choose nonsense if you depend on your ability to choose a job you may choose rubbish it may look nice but that is the road of perdition if you choose where you want to stay by yourself you say i want to stay in lagos or abuja my tama or somewhere there somewhere peaceful i don't want some of you are already laughing but god is saying that's not my path for you you are saying i take authority over it you really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in zaria how about gentlemen I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be or not? Where after a sermon, a man of God will drop a jeep somewhere and say, Man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship. You think I will not want a place where they will buy suits? And members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for god to direct you i'll never forget i was rejoicing the year we we're about to prepare for koinonia to start i was so happy because i was saying lord my share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and i've come to a point where i don't give god if god says stay in zaria forever i stay in zaria forever 
I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us. We will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. Say, I want a healing ministry. God says, you are not called into a healing ministry. Say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. You say, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction. When you pray, God directs you through certain ways. These are subtopics under prayer now. It is prayer that will open you up to any other way that God will lead you. Please take what I'm saying seriously. It doesn't matter how else it is prayer that will open the door. When you pray, the first way God can direct you is through light from scripture. Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says... God who in sundry times and diverse manners. So God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son. Hallelujah. So God speaks to men how? In diverse man manners. But in these last days, that his primary means of communication is through his son, which is the word. The word of God. Number two, when you pray, you will hear the voice of the Spirit. Isaiah 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. The direct voice of the Spirit, either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man. Ah, I wish I had time to walk this. John 16 verse 13 also it says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Guide you. Guide you. The third way, when you engage in prayer, you will receive divine encounters. Dreams, visions, revelatory experiences. There are lots of instances in scripture where God used divine encounters to bring revelation to people, especially dreams and visions. Genesis 41 verse 1 to 7, we see that the prophetic destiny of Egypt, they were forewarned. Genesis 41, don't turn there. Just write it, please. Verse 1 to 7. It was the Pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack. And it helped them to prepare. In Exodus chapter 3, Verse 2 to 3, Moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer. It is one way God speaks and directs men. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. 1 Kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15. After Solomon loved the Lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings, the Bible says God came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and God gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule Israel. In Acts chapter 9 and Acts chapter 10, they all record the conversion of Paul. Remember, it was a divine encounter. Paul had a vision where he saw Jesus Christ. And then he became blind. 
But even in his blindness, the Bible says he went to the house of Judas and Paul was praying. While he was praying, he saw um, um, who, who is the Ananias in a dream, in a vision coming. Because that's what God told Ananias. He said, brother Saul, he's in a house, he prayed and behold, he has seen you in a vision. So you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny. The fourth way God will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities. Fathers, mentors, deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too. Elderly people, not just elders in church. Men who have had the advantage of age in their lives. But my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship. One great platform to receive spiritual direction. You can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life. Hallelujah. Wisdom to your life. I'll never forget one of our boards of trustees. I met him one time and we got talking and I was sharing with him about something and while I was talking to me it was a big mountain. I was sharing and he was just looking at me. And after I finished saying it, he just laughed. Do this, do this, do that. And that was the end of it. It's amazing that what is a mountain to you, somebody has been matching that mountain for many years. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you. I've shared it again and again. Even with the little opportunity that God has given for ministry and counseling, when I talk to people, they come with seemingly mountains of challenges. And while they are talking, I'm just looking at them and wondering, is this it? This is what you call a mountain? And I just tell them, do this, do that, and that's the end of it. One of my great friends was struggling in ministry. Things were tied down. Honestly, things were really, really tied down. And he came and met me. He said, man of God, what is the way out? What do I need to do? This, you know, this, there's no opening. There's no door opening in ministry. And I just told him, this is what God is saying. A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And that was how his ministry opened up. In very strange ways. A great man, many of you know him. He's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received because people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudok called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle John C. Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8, from verse 7 to 15, I want us to read that one. 
second kings chapter 8 guys don't project it until i ask us to do so so that our time is gone i mean this project this one now second kings 8 verse 7 to 15 is the an interesting story between prophet elisha the king of syria called ben haddad and one boy called hazael who later became king let me show you how that god can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic let's read it very quickly elisha came to ben, to damascus and ben haddad the king of syria was sick and it was told him saying the man of god is come hit our next verse and the king said unto hazael hazael was his boy like his servant take a present in thy hand see why it's good not to go and meet a man of god empty-handed and go meet the man of god and inquire of the lord so how do you inquire of the lord through the ministry of the prophets too are you seeing that inquire of the lord saying shall i recover from this disease i want to know so that i can put my house in order next verse please so hazael went hold on hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life hazael went to meet the man of god and took a present with him even of every good thing of damascus 40 camels burden and came and stood before him and said thy son ben haddad king of syria has sent me to thee saying shall i recover from this disease now watch this verse 10 and elisha said unto him go and say unto the man of god thou mayest certainly recover he said how be it let me tell you the truth i'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you the truth of the information is the king is going to die how be it the lord has shown me that he shall surely die next verse watch this i wish i had time i would have acted the drama and he settled his countenance after speaking to him the prophet just found his face and started crying and hazael said what is wrong the bible says he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed and the man of god wept why did he weep next verse and Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou will dash their children, and reap up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry, a, I'm joking, no? you are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming, but I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. 2 Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry. And in 24 hours, it ended famine. 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, You shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, Oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sends the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize? That it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday, but what he's saying now. Listen, 
God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change, sorry. But his plans can change. Please, I need you to, say, to get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively, but I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil, he can decide that you go by road. So, the destination you arrived, but the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out, could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying, it proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Severe yourself from that relationship. Listen. It's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen. If God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on its own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rema that the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 27 to 30, that's the first time we see that prophets came into a city so the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11. From verse 27. Prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets. Not one. Many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And it's signified by the spirit that there should be great death, famine throughout the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21 verse 10 to 11 just write it where he entered and he saw paul and he took paul's girdle and tied himself he said whoever owns this girdle this is how the nation of israel this is how the people of god in jerusalem 
they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues? But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord. I must marry December. Who asked you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed. And live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying, start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying, start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated and one time we got talking and i said look young man listen you do the job the job he was doing he was teaching in one school guess his salary five thousand naira per month and if you don't come to teach the students they will still deduct something from it i told him remain there he's teaching you discipline he's teaching you submission God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come, but wait for God's time. It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. He said, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry. I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. What's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home where did it go to say it's still there oh, but i i found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it i said really wisdom from experience could it be that this is a revelation for someone you finish school you've done everything for one year you did not get a job people think you don't have faith god is teaching you the art of waiting it will be relevant when you see the kind of job he gives you. And you sister, nobody has come to ask you out. You are godly, you are virtuous. 
Oh Lord, are they not seeing me? God is saying, I shut their eyes. Because the quality of the man I want to bring requires preparation. Keep preparing yourself. And you will say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to help myself. God, he says, it's okay. But if you can wait and follow through with me, the end is peace. Penina kept mocking Hannah. But the day Hannah had her own child, he was a prophet. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. In just five minutes that we have left, listen, before we pray, I want you to examine in one minute all the wrong decisions that you have taken because you did not seek the assistance of the Holy Spirit. God told you pray about it. You said it does not matter. If only you prayed, if only you took out time, you probably would not have started the ministry. Now you've started the ministry and it's killing you. If only you took out time to pray, you would have known that that friend is a deceitful person. He looked like an angel. When he came, he told you he was a man of God. Little did you know that he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But God was telling you, pray. But you said, I'm in love. Lift your voice and begin to pray. And say, Lord, I refuse to move without you. I refuse to take decisions in life without you. No matter how achievable they look. You can become successful without God. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. It pays. It pays to be divinely directed. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. There is a way of doing ministry that seems right. There is a way of doing business that seems right. There is a way of getting a job that seems right. There is a way of getting a husband and a wife that seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way of trying to get the anointing. There is a way of trying to access revelation that seems right. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I don't trust myself outside of you. I need you to help me. Help me. Help me. End confusion from my life. End darkness from my life. I'm tired of making stupid decisions. I'm tired of doing the wrong things. Go ahead and pray. I'm tired of cycle after cycle of mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes for as long as you learn the lesson. But when it becomes the theme of your life, you need divine direction. In one year, you have entered 10 relationships. They have all landed you in trouble. You need divine direction. You have entered 10 businesses. They've all landed you in trouble. You've started ministry everywhere. But you've ended up with scandal after scandal. Tonight is the time to flog it out with destiny. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm tired. Oh, I can't go anywhere without you. My destiny is at the mercy of your voice. My destiny is at the mercy of your word. Koinonia is at the mercy of your direction. Go ahead and pray. Just two prayer points tonight. Where is the place of my healing, oh God? Direct me. Where is the place of power? Where is the place where I will access life? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point tonight is we're going to say, Lord, the direction I need to break the current limitation of my life to a new experience. Listen, brothers and sisters, I submit to you that the difference between where you are right now and the next level of your life is just one direction. A journey of 40 days can be turned into 40 years when you do not know the road. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? If only you were divinely directed, you would have gotten a job by now. You would have even been maritally settled. There are many people who are barren. If they can be directed to the right ministry, barrenness will bow at once. You are going to pray. You know the areas of your life where you are tired of confusion. Submit yourself tonight and lift your voice and say, let light come. Let light come. Lead me to the place of light, oh God. Are you praying tonight inside and outside? Some of you, you're coming here tonight is the answer to the voice of God in your life. Where you will hear truths that will connect you to the next level of destiny. the place where I can learn authentic ministry lead me to the place where I can find mentorship and building direct me show me light from scripture show me where I need to settle down I'm trusting you where is the next place of the assignment pray Reveal it to me. I don't want to be in a place you are not directing. Lift up your voice and pray. Direct me to my wife. Direct me to my husband. Direct me to the assigned job. Direct me to the circle of friends. Direct me to the messages. Direct me to the encounters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, between today and the miracle service on Friday, listen, pick any day of the week. It can be from tomorrow. Pick any day of the week and dedicate it to fast and pray. And the theme of that fasting is for divine direction in your life. Are you getting me? List all the things you know. Don't pretend like you have everything in order. You're going to say, Lord, this area, this area, this area, speak to me. I'm tired of silence from heaven. I want to provoke your voice. The messages you know by different men of God that have to talk about divine direction, get them. Sit under that anointing. Fast. Six to six, six to four, and settle down. Not the kind of fasting that you are answering every call and you are doing everything. Set to pick a convenient date and settle down. And I assure you, some of you, as you are praying, you will fall asleep. And in that sleep, you will see what you have never seen. And that's what will connect you to the next level. Some of you, as you are praying for the first time, you will see a vision. A real vision. Some of you will hear the audible voice of God. Some of you, nothing spectacular may happen but one direction from the word of God. And if you have graduated here and you are thinking of leaving, don't be in a hurry to leave. Settle down and give yourself one day and say, Lord, what is the blueprint for my life? The Bible says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Last prayer point. Reveal to me the next blueprint of my life, oh God. Go ahead and pray. Where am I going from here? Maritally, financially, ministerially, pray. I'm tired of confusion. I'm 
am a final year student. In weeks I will be graduating. But oh Lord, open the heavens over me. I'm about to start ministry. I'm about to start a business. Open my eyes. I'm about to start a job. Give me direction. Yeah. Yeah. As you engage in prayer this week I guarantee you that the voice of God will speak for you in my place of prayer this week I will be praying for you from the depths of my heart we need divine direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction accurate direction for the next level of our lives accurate direction for the next level of our lives hallelujah now please before we round up listen to a very important announcement hallelujah the protocol department is still having a little issue sorting out the venue for our miracle service we really apologize for this. There is a program, CGC will be having a program on that Friday. Hallelujah. CGC is having a program on Friday. And that means that it may cost us a lot. Um, we may not be able to have the time, the whole time for the program. We can't say we'll wait till they finish. And so far, I think they have not been able to secure charity and faith hallelujah they've not been able to secure charity and faith at all for the program now listen if for any reason we do not have the opportunity to use these venues then next week miracle service will be our first night vigil hallelujah if we are unable listen please if we are unable to secure this then we will have our night vigil we will invite we'll make a quick arrangement bring in guest artists i may invite one or two men of god to join me and we'll have a very explosive session from maybe 10 o'clock down till morning hallelujah we we'll allow people to sell we we'll allow people to sell water or sell Zobo or those of you that can make moi moi or whatever so that those who are hungry and will come here you will invite your loved ones and there will not be time we will not have time constraints we will settle down and prove to the devil that Jesus is Lord hallelujah so listen if, if that is the case then most likely it is possible that we may still use this venue because I know um, CGC doesn't take all the time they are very very they'll start very fast so if they do finish just take note of our text messages please and please between today and tomorrow between today and tomorrow i'm um, called the protocol let me just know if we have concluded on that so that we'll announce it immediately All right, next Friday will be a night vigil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, believe me, you have not seen anything like it. It's not the vigil you will sleep. Hallelujah. I won't be doing this alone. It's going to be a powerful thing. We'll make the arrangement from after this meeting. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have Pastor I come from Kaduna, House on the Rock, and then we'll contact one or two people, and it will be an explosive time in the spirit. So, you invite everybody your family members bring in your little snack if you think you want to sleep carry your bed from home and bring it hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord 
and to that effect please prayer department you meet one hour before the time so that you can set the atmosphere school of ministry students next week saturday um we'll either fix the class in the afternoon or we'll just scrap it for that day and then we'll use the extra class that we fixed but there's there's lecture tomorrow at that you are going to pray let's pray concerning the night with you hallelujah i'm sure that god wants to do a great thing don't you think so lift your voice in one minute and say lord we thank you it will be a time of visitation it will be a time of visitation a mighty time of visitation strange things will happen in this place he will move in power in the name of jesus christ all the vessels that you will be using you will come in might you will come in power there will be healings there will be miracles there will be manifestations of the spirit of god i thank you because you are coming with great grace in the name of jesus let it be a night of prophecy let it be a night of miracles let it be a night of restoration let it be a night where you will locate men in the name of jesus wipe the tears of families by the power that is in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah time is 10 p.m please come early uh, we'll do our best to provide i know that because it's a night vigil there'll be so many people and those who are coming from other places please and please we'll make arrangement with the union of road transport workers so that there will be buses and bikes kekena pep enough to be able to convey people and bring them hallelujah praise the lord and then in the morning hopefully when we're done we'll make arrangement with them so that there'll be buses as usual just the way we have it every week i truly believe it will be a powerful time so take the opportunity to fast pray invite don't be selfish drag your family members let them come and sleep here hallelujah if they want to sleep just tell them behave like you are under the anointing and then you can lie down and sleep those who are worshiping with us for the first time we apologize our time is gone i'd like you to please find your way and come out quickly inside and outside inside and outside you're welcome we want to welcome you god bless you god bless you go remain on your seat the lord brought you here to bless you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline 